Now, jazz drumming is something very close to me. Uh, I spent a great number of years in college studying it, and uh, it's what I tell people I do if they ask. I could talk for hours on the subject, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I think the most important parts of playing jazz are. All right, first, the cymbal beat. The cymbal beat is a melody that we play on our ride cymbal. It should not be treated like an ostinato pattern that we just play snare drum fingers under. Okay, it's not in the background. It's, it's the foreground. It's our focus. We should be phrasing it like a soloist would phrase a melody. It should be what leads our entire drum kit, actually, when we play jazz music. So treat your cymbal beat like a melody, and it will come across that way. Our snare drum and bass drum comping are accompanying our own cymbal beat just as much as they're accompanying a soloist. Example of treating the ride cymbal like a melody. Next is feathering the bass drum. All the great masters will tell you that you should be feathering the bass drum at least to some degree. It'll help lock in your time with the bass player and it just solidifies things overall. It's important that it's felt rather than heard. Uh, I'll give you an example of how I do it. Now I play heel up in this situation uh, just because I feel that my foot control heel down is not strong enough uh, to, to really feather the bass drum effectively. It will still work heel up, you just have to drop your heel gently right at the bottom of the pedal board. I find it easy to play quietly that way, it might be different for you but I'm just telling you what works for me. it at all tempos uh, from a ballad to just about as fast as I can play it. Faster than that I, I simply don't do it. It's as easy as that. Okay comping is another concept that took me a while to figure out. Your snare drum is not just playing randomly okay it's got a couple functions. It continues the melody lines of soloists. Um, I might be generalizing a bit here but uh, bebop lines tend to end on beats one and three on strong beats. If you start your snare drum comping phrases on the end of one and end of three, you'll naturally be right in front of the soloist. Try that. Just practice playing snare drum comps on end of one and end of three, like this. The snare drum is also accompanying our own ride cymbal beat, so treat it that way. Play it where you feel it complements the cymbal beat naturally. It could be in unison or it could be in the cracks of the cymbal melody. And watch the volume too, don't play it too loud. Now there are a couple of basic comping patterns to get under your hands. The Charleston. The upbeat to downbeat. rolling triplet and the 
quick two note drag. Most comping phrases are made out of these building blocks. Finally, don't forget to play the hi-hat so it can be heard. I used to hate how the hi-hat sounded in a jazz groove, but then I kind of realized that it maybe it was because I wasn't playing it so tightly. The ride cymbal and the hi-hat weren't locking up, and it sounded sloppy. That's probably why I, I didn't like it at the time. If everything grooves, though, and everything lines up, you should be good no matter what you do. All right, so keep practicing with a metronome. Keep playing the music you love, and only good things will happen, I promise.